This super awesome e-bike has triple suspension, offer 1200 watts of peak power, has dual batteries, and this monster of a bike is actually foldable. To learn more about this super awesome e-bike, continue watching. Welcome back. So before we continue, I do want to give a special thanks to the people over at Angway for reaching out to me to not only offer this bike for review, but the chance to share it with all of you. And by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to decide if this is the right bike for you. This is part of Angway's new X-Series release. They released the X20, X24, and this is the X26, an off-road ready and capable e-bike. In this video, we're going to take it for a test ride to see how it performs. I'm going to share my personal pros and cons. But before we do that, we're gonna go over the specs and features of the X26. As you can tell, we're in a pretty neat environment. We got flowing water, an old train bridge and rail line, tons of trails. This is gonna be a perfect location to test out the performance of the X26. Now, as you can tell, this is a pretty big bike. This is probably the largest bike I reviewed to date. And as I mentioned, it's off-road ready and capable for more than one reason. Number one has the humongous 26 by four inch fat tires with the hard spoke wheels does have a powerful 1000 watt motor, which peaks at 1200 watts, does have triple suspension and a dual battery system, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. On top of that, you can also carry a passenger or some cargo if you wish to, which is more suited for this bike, but it has a lot of neat features as well. So starting off with the handlebars, they are nice wide handlebars, gonna have good stability with them. For the grips, they are locking leather grips. They're nice and soft and comfortable. You can replace them, obviously, but they do feel great as is. For stopping power, you do have front and rear hydraulic disc brakes. They are strong and powerful, so you won't have any issues coming to a complete stop in a short amount of distance. In the middle here is your color LCD display. It does display your battery level, your speed, pedal assist mode, and you can toggle through max speed, average speed, trip odometer, voltage, time that the bike is on. It also has a customizable menu, which you could access by following the instructions in the manual where you can customize the output of each pedal assist mode. So this does have five pedal assist modes and you can adjust the percentage of power for each of those modes. Very similar to the Engway Engine Pro that I reviewed. Not a whole lot of bi bikes offer that capability. On the left-hand side here is your thumb throttle. So you just push down with your thumb to accelerate. Beneath that is your electronic horn. And right next to your thumb throttle and horn is your five button control module. Left button, long press to turn on and off. Right button is your dedicated headlight button. Plus and minus is your pedal assist mode for higher or lower. And eye information allows you to toggle through the different displays on the display itself, like the odometer, trip, voltage, but also allows you to change the ride modes. It does have three ride modes, eco, normal, and sport. Eco mode is what's gonna get you the most distance on this bike, which is 62 miles on throttle only and 93 miles on pedal assist. Now that is an estimate. It does depend on the rider's size, terrain, and how you are riding the bike. Normal mode is right in the middle. Sport mode gets you the most power out of the motor and allows you to go the max speed of 31 miles an hour. Now this is a class three bike, so you wanna be aware of your state and local municipality regulations regarding e-bikes and what is allowed on the streets or trails. Now, if you're riding off-road like this, Perfectly legal, no issues at all. You could take on any off-road trail. But if you're gonna use this for a transportation mode, riding on the streets, make sure that your local area does allow this. Now the bike does weigh 90 pounds. So it's a heavier bike, but it's under 100. So it's not terribly difficult to maneuver, but it is a big bulky bike. But as I mentioned, the great feature is that this bike is actually foldable. Yes, this bike does fold in half and allows it to make it a little bit easier for transporting. Now, there are some cons related to that, which I will get to later on in the video. It does have an eight speed Shimano gear system. But continuing on, we do have your front fork suspension, which is adjustable for the compression if you want it stiffer or softer. Your front headlight here, as mentioned, the hard spoke wheels, which look really great. They're like a gunmetal gray type of, uh, color on them. 
Great cable management here. They are wrapped up in a sleeve and does run under the frame into the computer itself. Now for the battery power, it does have two batteries. The first battery, the main battery, is located right here inside the frame. It's a 19.2 amp per hour battery. All you have to do is split the bike in half to remove it, but you can charge it inside the bike. Second battery, you may be wondering, where's that? I don't see it. It's a rather unique second battery. It does require the key to get it out. So you do unlock the seat release here, and in doing so, you unlock it. This is your second battery, this entire thing right here. So it's not only your seat post, but it's also the second battery. It's a 10 amp per hour battery. But you can turn on the second battery with the power button up here. So when you push that button there, it does illuminate green showing the power is on. That will also allow you to use power from the second battery. Now as the other Engway M20, which does have a dual battery system, the way it works is that you could use just independently the main battery. If you do turn on this one, it will draw from whichever battery has the most power first, then they will draw the same level all the way down to completion. So you will get dual battery use either conjunctively or independently, however you want to do it. But I always, when I ride it, I have them both on. That way they're going to draw nearly the same level at the same time. Now, if you come down here, you may be wondering, what's this plug for? Well, this plug plugs into the back of the seat stem and allows you to connect that second battery to the bike itself. So that plug must be attached in order for you to draw power from the second battery. You also can charge the battery with a charging port just above that. So if you want to leave the seat stem in here to charge it up, you can, but it is locked in place. You can't remove this unless you have that key to unlock it. Otherwise, it is going to be fixed in place. Even if you want to adjust the height of the seat, you do need to unlock it to release the latch to adjust the seat. On this side over here, you do have your charging port to charge the main battery in the housing your release latch for folding the bike in half. And coming back here, I'm sorry, below that, you do have your second suspension here, right below the frame above the pedals. Coming to the back, we do have the rear seat, which does release. It is locked in place with slots, no tools required. So if you don't wanna have this on here, you could use saddlebags or a milk crate for carrying cargo, but the seat is fixed in place, but it just slides in place. So it's not gonna fall off but you can remove it quickly if you have to. Below that, we do have your third suspension system coming down to your cassette with the eight-speed system, another rear spoke wheel, and you do have your 1,000 watt motor, rear hub motor, which does peak out at 1,200 watts. Coming to the back here is your tail light slash brake light. So when the headlight is on, this will illuminate, and when you do hit the brakes, it does shine even brighter to let people know behind you that you are stopping. And lastly, the bike has a total payload of 330 pounds. So whether you're short, tall, lighter, or a little bit heavier, this bike can handle a payload of up to 330 pounds. Adjustable seat will allow you to get riders at different heights. But I will say, overall, this bike is geared for, I'd say, average to above average height riders. I am 5'11". I do fit on this, but I do have the seat stem down relatively low. Otherwise, I'll be on my tippy toes. But if you're over six foot tall, this bike can certainly handle you in more ways than one. With all the details out of the way, I think it's time to have some fun. So I'm gonna gear you up. We're gonna put you on the chest mount. We're gonna power down to sport mode, hit some of these trails and water holes here and see how well the X26 performs. We're gonna do a little creek crossing here. And I know you probably have a reflection here. It does look bright and vibrant even in the daytime. I am in sport mode, pedal assist five. Just like the other Engway products I've reviewed like the Engine Pro and the M20, your throttle output is based on which pedal assist mode you're in. So pedal assist one, you'll get minimum output, minimum speed. Pedal assist five is maximum speed, maximum output. That's regardless if you're in eco, normal, or sport mode. And the upside of that is that you don't need to worry about uh, feathering the throttle to maintain a speed. You just pick which sport, I'm sorry, which pedal assist mode you want to be in. And that way you can give a full throttle and maintain a constant speed based on which pedal assist mode you're in. So let's start moving. So I'll handle that pretty much no problem, especially with these huge beefy tires. 26 inch allows you to tackle a lot more terrain than on the other 
20 inch tires on other t other bikes especially the wide fat tires it doesn't want to kick out or slide out as easily suspension is oh, so nice on this bike it's probably one of the best features A little bit of mud. Brakes are wet, but they still work. Let's go around that. To kick it down to pedal assist one. I do have the throttle all the way down, just going seven miles an hour. I kick it up to three, keep the throttle forward. It's going to accelerate, so just showing the example of how the pedal assist and throttle does work in conjunction to each other. This is a really bumpy trail. Tons of rocks jutting out. You probably hear it in my voice shaking about, but I'm not being thrown about. It feels very stable. Another water hazard here, we'll go through it. No issue there. Now the bike's not waterproof, it can't get submerged, but it can certainly get wet. This is like rock crawling territory. Most bikes wouldn't be able to handle this. And I'm still making it. Now I can't do top speed test on this on this trail. There's not enough room, not safe, but I can confirm that it has gone 31 miles per hour on pedal assist five sport mode on a flat, even road. All in all, I feel this is a really capable bike for everyday terrain. I think this is definitely more suited for off-road use like this than it is for commuting, but you can certainly use it for whatever you want. But I feel a lot safer on this bike doing this type of terrain than on some of my other bikes. But those bikes aren't designed or have the features that this one does with off-road use in mind. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons. Now again, these are just my personal opinions and thoughts. Angway has not told me what to say. They do give me the freedom to say what I want, both good and bad regarding their products. Now for the cons, I do have a few. Two are related to each other, one's not. So the first one is the headlight. Headlight isn't great. It's a light, it shines, it's better than nothing, but I think they could have put a better headlight on here, especially if you're gonna be doing evening or nighttime off-road use. If you're gonna be doing a lot of nighttime riding, I would recommend upgrading the headlight or getting a handlebar mounted headlight. It works, it's just not as good as other lights I have reviewed on other bikes. So that's just me nitpicking for the most part. I don't do a lot of nighttime riding. I won't use the light much, but I did want to point it out. The second thing is regarding the folding mechanism. 
or the folding option. Now the bike does fold, which I think is a terrific option, but on other bikes that I have reviewed that do fold in half, they always have a stand or a base on the bottom so that when you fold it in half and let go of it or you know lower it down to the ground, it can stand on its own while it's folded. This cannot, this wants to tip over. There's no stand. There's just basically the seat post down there and it wants to tip over. So you either have to lean it against something or keep holding it up and balance it the entire time, which is not ideal, especially for a big bike like this. Now, if you can find a way to make that work, I mean, that's great. But for me, it's more of a inconvenience than anything else. If it's gonna fold in half, it should be able to stand on its own so you could do what you have to do in order to lift it up and put it in your vehicle. Related to that is my last negative or con, and that is the pedals. If this is a folding bike, it should have folding pedals. Every other bike that I have reviewed that does fold in half does have folding pedals because it makes a smaller footprint. So when it's laying on its side, it's not protruding up as much, not standing out as much. Not a huge deal because aftermarket folding pedals are only between $20 to $30, but they should have came with this bike. If the bike folds in half, the pedals should fold in half as well. Now for the pros. So number one is triple suspension. By far the smoothest ride I've ever taken on an e-bike. Whether you're going over bumps, bounces, rocks, stones, potholes, it's like floating on air. The triple suspension works flawlessly and it's a really, really comfortable ride. When I ride this compared to my other e-bikes that only have maybe front or dual suspension, you could certainly tell the difference. This thing feels like you're on a cloud. So if you want a stable, comfortable ride, especially if you're doing off-roading, this bike is gonna be the one for you. The second one is the dual battery system. Dual battery means longevity. You can ride for longer distances. So if you're gonna be hitting the trails, if you wanna ride independently of a battery on the main one and it gets down low, power on the second one. If you don't wanna worry about the levels going down fast at all, have them both powered on, you can get a full day's worth of riding, especially hitting the trails like this you won't run out of power anytime soon. Lastly is the foldable option. I do like that it is foldable, but as mentioned with the con, there are some hiccups when it comes to folding it, but folding it is an option. And if you could find a way to do it in a, in a manner that's not gonna be difficult or cumbersome, it's great that it is foldable, but just keep in mind, it's a long, large monster bike. So. I just wanted to put that out there. Now, if you would like to get more information or maybe to compare this bike to the X20, X24, there will be a link down below, which will allow you to get all the information and including the latest pricing of the X26. Also, as we speak right now, Engway is running a contest and all the details will be listed below. If you click their link, enter your email address, you could be one of many lucky winners of their prize giveaway. So if you wanna enter for something that you could possibly receive and win for free, check the details down below. Once again, thanks to Angway for reaching out to me and sharing it with you. Hopefully now you know if the X26 is the right bike for you. Thanks so much for watching, safe riding, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.